With certain composite images, you may find that you want to utilize two layer masks with one image layer. And that is absolutely possible through the use of layer groups. Let's take a look at an example. I'd like to take this turn and blend it into the background. I've got a little bit more colorful scenery here for the turn. And so I want to place the turn onto that background. I'll place them essentially into the water on the shoreline here. Now I've already created a selection for the turn, so I'll go ahead and select the turn layer, and then I'll choose Select Load Selection from the menu, and then I'll choose the Turn Channel. That's the saved selection that I created for this image. I'll then go ahead and click OK, and that will load the selection of the turn. I could certainly add a layer mask based on the selection to the turn layer, but I'm going to instead use a layer group, and that will enable me to apply some adjustments, if need be, that affect only the turn. So I'll go ahead and click on the Add Layer Group button, the folder icon at the bottom of the Layers panel, and then I'll double click on the name, and I'll just type Turn, the name of the layer that I'm going to put inside of that layer group, and then I can click and drag and drop the turn layer inside of the turn layer group. I'll then click on the thumbnail for the turn layer group, and with that layer group active and with a selection loaded in the image, I can click on the Add Layer Mask button, the circle inside of a square icon at the bottom of the Layers panel, in order to add a layer mask based on that selection. Now the layer mask is attached to the layer group, but because the turn layer is inside of that layer group, the mask affects that image as well. Now at this point I have a reasonably good composite image, at least in terms of a starting point, but the turn doesn't really blend into that water very well, and so I'd like to add another layer mask. And I think I'll just use a gradient layer mask so that we can get that turn blending into the water with a little bit of a transparency in terms of the transition. Of course, I already have a layer group with a layer mask. What I really want is a second layer group with a second layer mask so that I have a gradient layer mask that is independent of my turn layer mask. And that way, if I need to go back and clean up the turn layer mask or change my gradient layer mask, I can do either of those very, very easily. So I'll go ahead and add a new layer group, and then I'll add a layer mask to that layer group. I can also rename the layer group. I'll just call this gradient, for example. And now I have a layer group with a layer mask called Gradient. That layer mask is filled with white because I didn't have a selection active when I created the layer mask. And what I want to do now is place my turn layer group inside the gradient layer group. So I'll just drag and drop the turn layer group onto the gradient layer group. So now the turn image layer is inside the turn layer group, and the turn layer group in turn is inside the gradient layer group. So I'm nesting these layer groups together. I now can select the gradient layer mask, and then I'll choose the gradient tool from the toolbox. I'll make sure that I'm working with a black to white gradient in a linear fashion with a normal blend mode and a 100% opacity, and now I can draw a gradient on that layer mask in order to blend the turn into the water a little bit. I'll go ahead and press X on the keyboard to exchange foreground and background colors, so I'm painting from white to black with that gradient, and then I'll simply click and drag across the image in order to add a gradient. So we can take a look at that gradient if we hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Macintosh, and what that's doing is causing the top portion of the image to be visible, the bottom bottom portion of the image to be invisible with a smooth transition in between. A very short transition, but a transition nevertheless. I'll go ahead and Alt or Option click on that layer mask again so that we can see the overall image. And now I have one layer mask that is constraining the visibility of the turn layer to just the turn, and another layer mask that is causing that turn to blend into the background, at least in terms of its feet, with a gradient transition. And I can always go back and replace the gradient with a different one or fine tune that turn layer as needed in order to improve the result. And of course, because I'm using a layer group here, I can also apply a targeted adjustment. I do need to make sure that I've changed the blend mode for my layer group from pass-through to normal. I'll go ahead and adjust that just for the gradient layer group. And then inside of the turn layer group, I'll select the turn layer, and now I can add an adjustment layer, for example, possibly adjusting the overall color balance. And now you'll see that I'm affecting only the turn when I apply that adjustment to color balance. So I can shift things a little bit more toward an orange value with the yellow and red addition, for example, in order to shift the color values for the turn so that it blends in a little bit better as far as the overall color. 
So you can see by stacking multiple layer groups, each with its own layer mask, I'm able to really maximize my flexibility in terms of creating a composite image that blends multiple layer masks that are fully editable. I can always go back and modify either of these two layer masks if I'd like. And in fact, it's possible to stack even more layer groups. I can stack up to 10 layer groups, each with their own layer mask if I'd like to. But of course, in most cases, two is going to be more than enough. But the point is that we can use multiple layer groups, each with their own layer mask, so that we can work with maximum flexibility as we're creating a complex composite image.